Aloha everyone and thank you so much for tuning in to another week of Trauma Recovery University. I am your host Athena Moberg and with us in the green room is your incredible co-host Bobby Parrish. This is take two if you are tuning in live. Our first Google Hangout on air tonight. For some reason something is uh, malfunctioning with the software and we do apologize for technical difficulties with Google. Uh, we are hoping uh, it looks like we have some viewers popping up, so I think we're back, and this is take two if you're watching. So um, welcome, welcome, welcome to the weekly live Q&A for the community of adult survivors of child abuse, specifically childhood sexual abuse. Myself, Athena Moberg, and my business partner, Bobby Parrish, we love to show up here every single week and answer your questions, your very real questions that you have about your recovery journey from childhood trauma. So you're in the right place if that is you, and I want to give a very special welcome if you're tuning in or listening on a podcast platform, such as iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, any podcast platform. If you're finding us anywhere but on our Roku TV channel or our YouTube channel, Please subscribe to our channel if our information is helpful for you. Share it with all of your friends. You can find us on Roku TV at Trauma Recovery University. And you can find us on our YouTube channel at Trauma Recovery University TV. So thank you so much for joining us this week. This is the second of three Twitter chats that we have every single week for the global community of adult survivors of childhood trauma, specifically childhood abuse and childhood sexual abuse. So welcome, welcome. Thank you to every single one of you who show up early and send in your questions. Please tweet us your questions about your recovery journey from childhood trauma using the hashtag no more shame. It would be wonderful if you tagged us. Uh, my Twitter handle is Athena Moberg, and my business partner Bobby Parrish's Twitter handle is Bobby L. Parrish. So please send us your questions, and we look forward to interacting with you on this week's topic that we are discussing, which is nutrition to support recovery. So what does nutrition have to do with our recovery journey from childhood trauma? As you know from previous broadcasts, if you are here and you are um, a subscriber to this channel, you've been watching us for the past year, year and a half, or even if you're new, when our bodies sustain long periods of abuse and trauma, there are fight or flight chemicals such as adrenaline and um, cortisol that flood the brain and cause brain damage if you uh, if the brain is soaking in those chemicals for a long period of time during sustained periods of childhood abuse and the rest of our body takes its toll because the brain sends messages to the rest of our body on how it's doing so Please uh, send us your questions. Thank you for being here with us this week and for chiming in with all of the supportive and helpful information that you always share with one another on this very important topic of nutrition and childhood trauma and, and how to support our recovery. We have uh, a very comprehensive one page. We want to give you complimentary access like we do every week to our one-page downloadable resource. You can always find those tonight as well as 90 or almost 100 hours of, of, of teaching on our YouTube channel. We have one-page downloadable resources to match up with each and every video. You can find those over at traumarecoveryuniversity.com or nomoreshameproject.com. Just click on the tab that says downloadables and you'll be given immediate access to our library of downloadable one-page resources to help facilitate your recovery journey. So without further ado, I am going to hand this over to my business partner, Bobby Parrish. And just again, welcome. We are so happy that you are here. If you are not live with us, tweeting in your questions using the hashtag no more shame, and you are only here for the replay, please know that as of just this past week, 
all of our videos in the description section of this video down at the very bottom of the description section of this video it will say if you're here for the replay and you don't want to hear us taking people's questions and answering their questions which might be the same questions you have and it's not something that we sometimes cover on the one page if you want to skip all of that which sometimes it's the most helpful part but if you want to skip it because you're short on time for some reason you can go down to the bottom of the description section and click on the number and it will fast forward the video so that you don't have any of the Q&A portion you only have the one page and the screen share portion of tonight's uh, live Q&A. So I'm going to turn this over to Bobby Parrish and I'll take this Twitter stream off of your hands there, Bobby. And we just are grateful that you guys are here. We're honored that you would spend this evening with us. Take it away, Bobby. Hi, guys. I'm so happy that we finally made it. And Athena worked her magic to get us back on the air when the um, technical difficulties. So a huge thank you to Athena who worked furiously uh, behind their scenes there to link everything. I would love to say a special hello tonight to Trina, Maggie, and Inundated Insiders. This is their first time joining us here, um, watching the video and tweeting alongside. And we're so thankful that you're here and we hope that this is something that you enjoy and you come back every week to join us again. So um, I want to issue a trigger warning. This is a broadcast that discusses childhood abuse. So um, please take excellent, you can see my dog there. <laughs> Hi Connor. <laughs> he was stretching. Okay. Anyway, um, I got photo bombed. Um, <laughs> So if you're watching this, please practice excellent self-care. And having my dog by me is good self-care for me. So if you get triggered, um, please just go ahead and, and walk away from the broadcast. If you're watching live, um, it will upload to YouTube within a matter of hours after we're done. And you can catch up with it then. If you're listening on a podcast or you're watching a replay on YouTube and you're feeling triggered, again, just go ahead and shut it down. Um, it'll be there later. You can catch up with it. We don't want this to be a source of stress and, um, and negative experience for you. So please feel free just to go ahead and shut it off and walk away if you need to. If you are in crisis and you need help right away, we encourage you to reach out to our friends at RAIN. That is the Rape, Abuse, Incest National Network. You can reach them toll free in the United States or Canada at 1-800-656-HOPE, H-O-P-E. And they're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They also have a crisis chat feature on their website at RAIN.org. And that is also accessible 24-7. If you are in the UK, you can contact the Samaritans if you are in a crisis, and that number is 116-123, or you can even email them, and you can do that by emailing joe at samaritans.org, and their website is samaritans.org. You can connect with all of the features that they offer there. If you are in Australia, first of all, hello. Um, our community is really growing in Australia right now by leaps and bounds. And so we're very excited to see you if you're joining us from Australia. Um, the crisis line number there in Australia is 131114. Um, I have them all on a little post-it note here on my uh, computer. So if you're in crisis, that's the number to reach out to in Australia. And um, if we, the more that our viewers grow, right now we're in 57 different countries, but as we get greater pockets of survivor communities in countries, I'll go ahead and provide those uh, crisis numbers at well, because I know that for survivors, sometimes crisis hits um, and if you need to know what resources you have that are available so I think that's about all um, welcome to everyone again we're so honored and excited that you're here and tonight we are going to talk about nutrition and choices that you can make 
um, in your daily life in terms of what you eat that can help support you as you deal with the after effects of childhood abuse and what it has done to your brain and your body. So, um, Athena, before we get into the one page, how's everybody doing online? I think everybody is doing good. I was just saying hello to all of our our new people that I've never seen before, just trying to send them personal messages. So um, you guys, we're growing at such a rapid pace. I just want to echo everything that Bobby just said. We are, we're honored that you're here. And this community is growing so much faster than we had, I mean, than we would ever dream. And while it is always a tragedy, to know that there are so many adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse out there in the planet. There is also such a comfort of knowing that we are not alone. So I want to just tell each and every one of you, I just want to get up in your little face and I just want to just hold your face and tell you, you are not alone. And if that's triggering for you, I apologize, but I mean it in a very, very, very loving way. So you're not alone and we're so happy you're here. And these chats, these Twitter chats, and this live stream has literally catapulted Bobby's and my personal recovery journey. Our healing is exponential. Every single time we welcome new people in from around the globe. I believe we're in 57, if not 58 countries now. And we have emails and YouTube subscribers and Twitter followers and Facebook friends and people in safe groups, global safe groups, globally accessible safe groups, healing in safe community where there is no abuse allowed. Zero tolerance for abuse. So if that is you and you are not welcomed into one of our safe groups and you would like to be in community, we're going to talk about that at the end of the broadcast tonight. It's free. There's no there's no catch. It's not a bait and switch. It's not a, yay, let's get you into a place so we can sell stuff to you. Like there's not, none of that's allowed. This is just for you, the survivor who's already been through hell and you're looking for help. Over in the About section of our YouTube channel, you can find four easy steps on how you can join Safe Community by friending us on Facebook first and liking our page. That's all you gotta do, there's no catch, and I just wanted to say a very special welcome um, to our first time viewers again. So, um, I'm, I'm a little frazzled, as Bobby mentioned, because our the tech difficulties are a little frustrating. I, I want to believe that other people on the planet experience the, tef, the technical difficulties that we do, but I'm just not 100% sure on that because we're here every week. So maybe it's a numbers game. Not sure, but it's frustrating. So um, this is there's no place I would rather be than here with you guys tonight talking about nutrition and how important it is and how it can help us along in our recovery journey and just be... Um, that little extra something that can help us if we're struggling with depression or different autoimmune disorders or having low energy or we have um, trouble sleeping or um, digestive issues. There's so many different things that can go on in survivors' lives, even more so than normals, like people that didn't incur years or ongoing childhood trauma. And just to know that we have some supplements we can buy over the counter or vitamins or different foods that we can choose to consume to help us with the level of inflammation in our body because inflammation is what causes our trouble. These anti-inflammatory foods that we're going to be sharing with you tonight, no catch, again, no affiliate links. All of the supplements I have stacked here on my desk are the ones I use that I bought at Costco for pretty cheap. And then all of the foods and everything that we're going to share with you on on our one page, as well as an extra special bonus link that's going to be in our downloadables tonight that will take you, you can print out your very own um, anti-inflammatory food pyramid along with a couple of pages of notes as well um, that I've been using for about, about three years now, just sort of been following along. So um, that's kind of all I really wanted to say. I, I really just, um, I'm just grateful that you guys are here and um, honored that we get a chance to serve this community in this way. So. How's everybody doing, Bobby? Any any uh, qu questions right off the right off the bat? Um, well, no. A couple of people though indicated that they talked with Rain this week um, on their way not have one eight hundred number. Woo, tongue twister, and that it was very helpful for them. And um, we always appreciate getting that feedback. Um, of course, we're sorry that you're in a crisis place where you need to speak with someone. But on the other hand, if it's helpful. And I find them to be helpful. 99.9% .9 of the time, we're really glad that you were able to reach them. 
Um, and then some of us are lamenting the fact that salty snacks and cheesecake are probably not part of an anti-inflammatory diet. Okay, that has to be Matt. And Matt, I'm telling you to quit quit taunting us because salty snacks are my favorite. I think it's Matt talking about the salty snacks. Am I right? Um, I, I'm pretty no. sure it's Matt. It's not? <laughs> It's Matt. It, it's it's those are it's, those are I, your kryptonite, Matt. I know that salty snacks are your kryptonite, and they're mine too. And I'm sure Sarah is talking about cake and tea. yes, yes, yes. I love you, Sarah. It is and Sarah with you. the cheesecake. Yes, of course. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you for helping us. Like we got another email this week, you guys. That was not a nasty gram email. It was another email saying that. It was from our survivor community, from a, from a community member that just found us. And she is grateful that even though this is a su subject that is filled with tragedy, there is a balance here on our YouTube channel with levity. That we, we do um, have a joyful perspective. We do, we do um, want to share that there is hope. We do want to let you know that it's not all gloom and doom and sad faces and, and Eeyore. Like, I have my Eeyore days. I really do. And I have my doom and gloom days. But... When we are here with you guys hanging out and we're we're having the teaching portion of this broadcast and the interactive portion of this broadcast every single week, it's just wonderful. It's very, it's very, very wonderful. Oh, and then, oh, snark alert. There's some snark that's about ready to go out right about now. Are you ready? Ready for it? One, two, three, go snark. For the for this for the sweet little person out there that says that I'm a predator that um, I must be a covert predator that wants to um, harm other people because I must not have true empathy and compassion because I have a smile on my face. I forgive you. And it's okay that you feel that way. It's a reflection of how you feel about yourself. And you can just watch all our videos or not watch our videos. But only time will tell if I'm a predator because sort of devoted my life to this entire community and eat, sleep, drink, and, you know, I'm in mounds of debt, and this is just the passion of my life. So you, person, have hurt my feelings, but I forgive you. And you can go find another YouTube channel to be a troll on because you're not welcome here if you're going to tell me I'm a predator because it's very rude and unkind. Okay, I'm done now. Snark alert over. Um, you know, something that we want to make sure that everyone hears tonight is that the information that we're providing is educational. We don't even begin to want to recommend that you pursue anything without talking to your doctor. Okay, it's very important. We don't know what medications you might be on. We don't know what limitations you might have. We don't know what pre-existing conditions that you might have. And so it's very important, especially before you start to take any kind of supplements. Um, if you're taking other medications, there may be interactions that would be dangerous for you. So please speak to your physician, speak to your um, family nurse, speak to whoever is your health provider and ask them if this is a wise course of treatment for you. Um, the inflammation diet that Athena is going to share, because she is absolutely an expert in that tonight, is so helpful for those of us who have undergone abuse. Because one of the things, and we've talked about this several times, in fact, just a couple weeks ago, we talked about abuse in the brain. And we explained how when you trigger that fight or flight response, um, when it is triggered, not you triggered, but it, it's automatically triggered. And you get that um, triad of um, hormonal glands in your body, the pituitary, the adrenal, and the hypothalamus, and they signal the body to start putting out the adrenaline and the cortisol because they think that it is such a threat that you will need to fight or flee. And those chemicals, you know, get shot out into your body and you're awash with them and you can run faster, lift heavier things, you know, your breath becomes more shallow so you can conserve blood oxygen. That's all well and good, but when you are abused as a child over a long period of time repetitively, our body is not meant 
to be exposed to those chemicals over a long period of time and at that frequency. And so they start to do, actually do damage to our body. They become toxic. And one of the things that we see, aside from the damage to the brain, which if you want to know more about that, go find that video. It's up on YouTube, Roku TV, Google+, and you'll be able to watch through that video and see what the effects are on our brain. But you also see changes in your body specifically to your autoimmune system okay and you're going to see perhaps that you're vulnerable to conditions which are directly related to our autoimmune system and those are things like um, type like diabetes eczema psoriasis lupus rheumatoid arthritis arthritis um, Sjogren's syndrome celiac disease I'm trying to think of all the different ones in our head. Allergies, okay, hay fever. All of those things are autoimmune disorders. And when our autoimmune system is triggered, one of the first things it does is become inflamed, okay? And that, that inflammation is a negative thing. It's not a good thing. And inflammation over time causes damage. In fact, um, we've had some recent research that comes out that shows after just one night, just one night of bad sleep, of poor sleep, there is a significantly observable um, increase in inflammation in your brain. That is why it is so important for us to take care of ourselves and to make sure we get the right sleep. And if we can help mitigate some of that inflammation by following an anti-inflammatory diet, then that's powerful, okay? And one of the things that we're trying to do um, in our recovery is take back our power. We didn't have power when we were a kid. We had no power. We couldn't stop what was going on. Now we have power. We're adults, okay? And we can take it back and we can begin to implement some changes, um, but in that process, we just want to make sure that we're very clear with you that one of those powerful steps needs to be involving your medical provider, okay? And so um, we're, we feel really strongly about that. Your medical provider needs to be a part of your team, part of your recovery team. And if you don't have a medical provider right now that you feel comfortable having on your team, I really hope that you can change providers and find one that you do feel comfortable having on your team. I know not everyone can do that. It might depend on the country that you're in and what's available to you. It might depend on what your insurance is or what's available to you. So if you can, um, have a medical provider that you trust, one that's informed about your trauma, and so that when you come in talking about a possible autoimmune disorder, they make the connection that says, okay, this is a trauma survivor. This is a child abuse survivor. And I want to look at this as an autoimmune disease that might be the result of their exposure to childhood trauma or abuse. Okay, so let's check back in on the Twitter stream and see how that's going. And then we're going to pull up the one page that's going to give you information about some different strategies you can implement. And I'll talk about a few of them and then I'll turn it over to Athena and she's going to specifically address the inflammation diet. So. <laughs> Where are we? I just love our peeps so much. Lindy? Thank you, Lindy. Lindy says that, that the person that called me a predator is cray cray. <laughs> Thank you, Lindy. And, every, and, and anyway, that, that's just my own little, sorry. I, I, feel very, I feel very blessed that you all have your claws out and that you all are protecting me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't have any um, questions um, other than I have one. Um, Phoenix wants to know about sleep. How much of my lack of sleep is PTSD versus my abuse slash immune system? Does that make sense? Um, we're going to cover a little bit of that in, um, in our one page and, and in the area when we talk about some supplements. But I would on in my, my answer to uh, PTSD versus abuse slash immune system, for me, my lack of sleep has very little to do with my immune system and my 
lack of sleep and nightmares that I have have, I think, everything to do with my PTSD. And that's just my answer. Bobby, your answer to that, your, your comments on that? I think it's probably a combination of PTSD um, and the abuse because PTSD triggers that hypervigilance. And when you're hypervigilant and you're anxious, it's really hard to sleep. If your abuse happened at night, I would look at that as something that might be operating. Or, or in the dark, if your abuse happened yeah. in the dark, not necessarily at night, but if it was dark in the room. Right, right. Um, and then the immune system, I'd have to know what kind of autoimmune um, issues that you were struggling with to tell whether or not that was part of it. But abuse can really mess with our sleep-wake rhythms. Um, and sometimes that's just something that we have to reset um, either, you know, with a conscious bedtime schedule. And sometimes it takes medication. And if it's going to take medication for you to get a good night's sleep so that you don't get that brain inflammation, then that might be something that you need to do and you can talk to your doctor about. Um, it's it's kind of one of those, okay, do I take a medication to help me sleep in order to combat you know, the difficulties that come with it. And you just kind of have to make that cost benefit choice and see if it's the right choice for you. But there are a lot of medications out there that can help you sleep that are not narcotics. So that's not what I mean when I mean, you know, medication that can help you sleep. So there are a lot that are not narcotics and that's not where you have to go um, first off the bat. So, um Bobby, um, I just wanted, I wanted to, on that topic that you're mentioning about it not being um, narcotics, when you bring up our one page, I can go and grab my sleep supplement that is over the counter that I also purchased at Costco to add to this other stack of supplements that I have here that I was going to show everyone. Is that okay. a good idea so that they can get, like, so they can see what it is? Okay. Yes. That awesome. sounds great. Okay. Um, so should we bring up the one page? Um, I hope yep. that helps. Um, Phoenix, Phoenix, would you just let us know? Honey, I sent you a tweet just to ask if our answers helped you with regards to your, your Q, because we want to make sure that we answer your Q with an A. So we want to answer your questions, you guys. Oh, Maggie wants to know, if I eat my allergens, my Anna reactions include my body overproducing and dumping dopamine and oxytocin. I'm not sure if that's a question. Um, Bobby, you might be a little bit more um, well-versed on that if I don't know if I'm missing something I'm not as familiar with the dopamine and oxytocin with regards to allergens I, I understand that to be true yes Maggie if that when you eat your allergens <laughs> that <laughs> yes it does it does include your body overproducing those um, the oxytocin is great though love to overproduce that one the dopamine not so much um, have you found a way working with your doctor to help um, work with that, you know, rather than um, uh, crochet time just posted an interesting graphic. So everybody take a look at that one. Ooh, um, yeah, go look at that. I've heard about apple cider vinegar, you guys. Definitely look at the graphic that it's crochet time posted at 348 p.m., uh, Hawaii, so 648 Pacific, 948 Eastern. Um, definitely take a look at that graphic. And then um, Dominique, honey, I do not, I have actually been looking for a client of mine um, to look for a directory for trauma-informed helping professionals. And to the best of my ability, there is not one out there that is published. But it's Bobby and I have a sort of a campaign. I, that's probably not the right words, but we have something that's sort of like our life's mission. Like we're sort of trying to encapsulate our life's mission with regards to this this survivor community it's called One Million Survivors. And I will probably end up taking the time to spearhead a directory that I can find or that I can cultivate or. Um, curate for trauma-informed helping professionals, but it's always going to be very subjective, and I say this very delicately, because what traumatizes and triggers one person does not traumatize and, uh, traumatize and trigger another person, 
but the overall umbrella of being trauma informed there is not it's not something that is that is even like the DSM five doesn't even acknowledge that we all need to be trauma informed, you know, and, but the DSM six is going to be, there are some changes I just read that they're going to be um, updating in the DSM six, some different personality disorders and different diagnostics that they use. And they're going to be mentioning trauma informed practices, but I don't think it is a best practice that is acknowledged across the board. Bobby, do you have any information on that that I don't have? Um, no, not yet. And I know that they kind of will discuss that down to their dying breath. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll be interested to see what they come up with as the final product. Um, although, Dominique, right now the best resource that I have seen that's out there that can be helpful for you, um, go to psychologytoday.com and they have a therapist directory. And you can search that directory by not just your location, but you can specify what specialties you want them to have. And of course, just because they indicated they have that specialty doesn't necessarily mean that they, you know, have the capabilities you're looking for. But you can search by, you know, do they have a specialty working in trauma? Do they have a specialty working with survivors of abuse? And then each one of the profiles, they are written by the provider. And so it gives you kind of, it's not a, there's not a committee that wrote all these profiles. The provider themselves, the therapist themselves submits um, the profile that's printed there on their page. And so you can get a little bit of a feel for who they are. And then I suggest just making a list and giving them a call um, and asking to speak with them on the phone for five minutes and seeing what you hear from there. But hey, right Bobby, now, uh -huh. um, is asthma an autoimmune disorder? Did we already answer that? That's from Sarah. I don't think we answered that. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. What was the question? Uh, Sarah wanted to know if asthma is an autoimmune disorder. That's a really good question. I, uh -huh. didn't, I was not under the impression that it's under the autoimmune disorder umbrella. I know other things like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and um, anything having to do with your thyroid, but I wasn't aware of anything that is um, asthma. It was an auto autoimmune. So we'll look that up for you, Sarah. Yes. We'll, um, we'll we'll check with the Googles and we'll <laughs> and we will um, get back to you on that. I think we are going to be transitioning into the one page portion of tonight's broadcast, you guys. Um, Oh, yes. Um, Trauma-informed practices in the DSM-6 sounds good. Hopefully not a train wreck like five. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm with you. Um, yeah. Um, really quick, what I'm looking here online, Sarah, it kind of depends on um, the what triggers your asthma. It's saying here that allergic asthma, so if your asthma is triggered by allergies, is considered to be an autoimmune disease because the immune system mistakes a harmless substance for a potentially dangerous one. And that's why the asthma gets triggered to try and clear that out of your system. But if, so, it, if asthma is triggered by something like, like, for instance, my dad before he died had asthma and my mother also has asthma, but that is connected to their COPD, which is which comes, right. comes from smoking. So that would yes. not be considered autoimmune, you guys. No, COPD, no. COPD is not. It auto looks like the difference hinges upon what triggers your asthma. So if it's hay fever, like my son, um, his asthma gets worse when you know his when allergy season hits. So it looks like that's where it swings. Um, on that I have, one. Okay. I have one that's thing fine. that I wanted to. Um, on just on that topic for Dominique. Um, okay, Dominique is asking if there are any inform if there's any information on prolonged trauma affecting gynecological issues um, such as PCOS. I I will I'm gonna answer it very quickly and we're probably gonna have to do a whole broadcast on gynecological issues that are that result from trauma from childhood sexual abuse. Um, and and, and our whole survivor community um, can benefit from this one question, Dominique, and I would like to address it on a larger and more extensive response. I want, I want to have an extensive response to this. I want to say yes, that gynecological issues can be a result of childhood sexual abuse. I personally 
had precancerous cells on my cervix for most of my life um, as a result of my childhood sexual abuse and trauma in my vaginal area. And then on the question that you asked, Dominique, about are there trauma-informed, is there trauma-informed care? I'm going to be looking into that. But I wanted to let you guys know really briefly as we're transitioning that I've had a slew of doctor's appointments lately. And in order to set myself up for success, I did some really, really healthy self-talk as I was driving to the doctor. Sometimes it takes like over an hour to get there. Sometimes it's 30 minutes. But while I was driving to my doctor's appointments, you guys, I was really um, encouraging myself to honor my body and do what was right for me. And I have to tell you that even though it was a little embarrassing at first, I looked at, at the people square in the eye that were the ones that would call my name and call me back, like the little intake nurse people, the ones that take your weight and your height and your blood pressure. And I let them know that I'm an adult survivor of childhood sexual abuse. I'm a survivor and I live with PTSD as a result of that. And I need to have that noted in my chart for whoever is going to walk in that door, whoever my doctor is going to be that's going to examine me. I need them to know that I'm an adult survivor of childhood sexual abuse and that I live with PTSD as a result and that I need to make sure that they check in with me to make sure that I'm doing okay. And if they're not able to do that, I need someone else. And I said it just like that. And they honored it every single time. In fact, one lady asked me if she could hug me. Like, can I just give you a hug? I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for telling me that. How old were you? And like, she just wanted to talk to me. So not that you have to go and, and do that, I'm not giving you another list of things that you need to do as the survivor, but it helped me just take back my power. I stood there and said, I'm a survivor and I need someone that's going to acknowledge the fact that I have PTSD as a result of this. And I need them to check in with me to make sure that I'm okay during this exam. And they honored my wishes. So I hope that helps someone out there that's watching this video. It's okay to say that and it's okay to ask. So I'm going to step off my soapbox <laughs> and hand this over to Bobby. and She's going to start our one-page screen share, and I'm going to go grab one more little bottle of supplements that I'm going to share with you towards the bottom of this one page. Take it away, Bobby. <laughs> okay. Let's do the present everyone thing here and <laughs> see if I can see find if I can it. Find oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my whole sound changed. It's my fault. Oh, it's my fault. My my, I changed my microphone for just a second. It'll be back to normal in like ten seconds. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. So let's look at the one page, and the top of the one page talks about why our body sustains the damage that it does, and. We've talked about this before. It's that sustained and prolonged exposure to those fight or flight chemicals. So the cortisol and the adrenaline, um, our bodies weren't meant to be, to have that sit in our system. Because even though, you know, when it comes out, when it floods our body, it takes a while for our body to clear that back out and excrete it. So we're literally sitting in that toxic soup for a period of time and our bodies are not meant to do that. And so we sustain damage to our brain and we sustain damage to our bodies. And as I said, a couple weeks ago, we did a video on abuse in the brain. So you'll be able to go back and look at that and see how the damage that was done to our prefrontal cortex and to our amygdala and our hippocampus um, and even down into the basal ganglia and the nucleus caudate that um, might be able to explain why you deal with um, obsessive compulsive disorder. So what we've put together are some different options, some education about what might help in certain areas. And I'm going to talk about the first couple of things here, and then Athena is going to talk about um, our immune system and the anti-inflammatory diet. Now, if you're looking at the screen right now, you'll be able to see down here at the bottom 
when you look at the PDF on your computer screen, all you're going to have to do is click right here and it will take you automatically to the anti-inflammatory food pyramid. But I don't have a clickable system <laughs> here, here on my JPEG. So when I get to that point, when I get down there, I'm just going to switch over to Athena and she's going to put up the screen share of the pyramid. And again, just to remind you, this information is providing education only. It's not medical advice. And we really encourage you to talk to whoever is your medical provider um, to talk about modifying your diet, um, especially when we're talking about supplements. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about brain health. Now, it's important to remember and for you to know that your brain is actually 60% fat. And so one of the most helpful things that you can do for your brain is to have a diet rich in omega fatty acids. Okay, so omega-3 and omega-6 because that can help deal with the damage that was done to your brain and you having less fatty acids, less fat in your brain than you need to have. And this is important as well if you suffer from an eating disorder as a result of your childhood abuse. You need to know that first of all, a healthy diet does include some fat and some healthy fats, okay? Um, as opposed to things like, you know, Crisco and lard. Um, we're talking about healthy fats, and Athena is going to talk about them a little bit more in an inflammation, anti inflammation diet. Things like coconut oil, um, extra virgin olive oil, canola oil, those are healthy fats, and it's okay for us to eat some of those. We need those. Um, omega fatty acids come from things like cold water fish, okay, salmon, anchovies, you, um, they also come from <laughs> avocados and flax seed. So obviously I will not getting be getting my omega fatty acids from anchovy. Nope, thank you. Um, but and sardines too. Sardines yeah. are really gross and they're really oh. high. <laughs> they're really high in omega 3. Oh, mercy me. Okay, nope, not my choice either. But if you like those there you go. Um, so also there are a lot of supplements out there on the market that can provide um, the omega fatty acids. The next thing we're going to talk about is just supporting your central nervous system in general. Um, you know that a lot of us as a result of our childhood abuse suffer with anxiety and anxiety can also be attached to a symptom of PTSD. The B vitamins are so helpful when it comes to soothing your central nervous system. And when you're feeling especially anxious, um, B vitamins can be very helpful. And B vitamins come from things like um, lentils, chickpeas, beets, parsnips, nuts, whole grains, and eggs. Uh, and if you want to know more, just do a just talk to Mr. Google and let him know you're looking for sources of vitamin B. Um, and again, you can find those in supplements over the counter. And Athena has some excellent examples for you. Um, and next, so we're going to talk about supporting the immune system. And again, that's because one of the things that happens when your immune system gets triggered is that inflammation in your body. And inflammation is not just destructive to our body, but it's very painful. And we want to do everything we can, again, to take our power back and to mitigate that damage and that pain. So I'm going to pull back from my screen share and then let Miss Athena put hers up. <laughs> Thank you, you guys. I'm going to share really quick. I'm going to look at you here um, and share some supplements with you really quick and then I'm going to do a screen share. Really quick, I wanted to answer a question from It's Crochet Time. Can we drink coconut oil straight like a shot? Yes, you can. And you can also do that with extra virgin olive oil 
which is one of the healthiest oils as well. Coconut oil and extra virgin olive oil depends on whatever flavor you like. The only thing different, they're both very good for you. And they, it just depends on what flavor you want. For instance, when I make popcorn, sometimes if I'm making kettle corn, like the kind that's like the salty and the sugary, because gosh, that's the best, right? I use a little bit of coconut oil when I make my kettle corn with a little bit of sprinkle of the salt, a little sprinkle of the sugar, and with a little bit of that coconut flavor, it's pretty delicious. But if I'm making just regular straight up popcorn where I just kind of want that salty snack, then I will use extra virgin olive oil if I'm making my popcorn. And of course, it doesn't taste exactly the same as if I were to use vegetable oil or whatever. But vegetable oil that they sell like the Wesson and the Crisco is not high in omega-3 fatty acids. It's not good for you. If I'm going to eat oil, I'm going to eat some healthy oil, you know. So um, so it's crochet time. Yes, you can. And they even have something called a bulletproof coffee, I believe is what they call it. And they get a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of coconut oil and um, a espresso shot. And they do it in like a like a blender food processor thing and um, and it's supposed to taste pretty delicious it tastes like a coconut latte or something but the the butter isn't obviously like very healthy but that's what's called bulletproof coffee they do butter and they do coconut oil so um, but yeah I'm not a huge I'm not a huge uh, huge fan I like my coffee just like I like it with a little bit of like fufu creamer in it you know I, I kind of like that but um, but I am a huge extra virgin olive oil fan, and um, I've been following this anti-inflammatory pyramid pretty good that I'm going to show you guys after I show you the supplements. So um, Lindy says she did the keto, keto ketogenic ketogenic. I'm sorry, I've never I, I haven't seen that ketogenic diet for a while, and it felt really good. The inflammation was gone. That is wonderful. I would love to look further into ketogenic diet. If your inflammation is gone, because I have arthritis in my hands, and um, man, turmeric saves me. Speaking of turmeric, perfect segue, you guys. I'm going to put down my Twitter stream here and um, hand the Twitter stream over to Bobby. And I'm going to share with you. I have some supplements here that I'm going to share with you guys. So um, the first being um, B12. Okay, this is B12 that I get at Costco. The only reason I'm sharing with you our audience and our community what works for me and and none of this is affiliate like I don't get paid anything this isn't a commercial I just want to share with you what works for me personally because I know we've received feedback from you guys that you love to know what we personally do and it just it makes it very real or human for you guys so I'm gonna share with you what I do I take one of these in the morning it is a dissolvable cherry flavored uh, tablet you put it under your tongue. It's called a sublingual. And it's the first vitamin I take in the morning when I wake up. And B12 helps with anxiety, helps with stress. It also helps with your metabolism. And I love it. I notice when I don't take it, I notice a difference. I don't manage stress as well. I don't feel the same. I'm, I'm not saying I'm like addicted to it or anything, but it's definitely helpful. And this bottle here is very, very affordable and you can get them at Costco. Sometimes they even have them on sale on like a two pack for like the price of one at Costco when, when they have some sort of a weird like combo thing. I don't know, but the, the, this is uh, nature's bounty. You can get this at Costco. So B12. Now turmeric. Turmeric is huge for me, you guys. It's been a lifesaver for me. Now you can eat turmeric. This is my anti-inflammatory pyramid, which I'm going to do a screen share um, so that you guys can get a close-up look. But this hangs on my fridge, and it's a three-page document. Okay, this is the pyramid, and then it has two pages of notes on different portion sizes, and, and it breaks down all the different things that you can do for an anti-inflammatory diet if you have inflammation in your body for any reason, not just as a result, result of childhood trauma. But this has been a lifesaver for me for three years. In fact, I've been doing this diet as much as possible. I'm not, I'm not overly strict because I know myself I will get carried away. I've been doing it since January 16th, 2013 is when, I, is when I printed it out. So it's been about three years and I'm healthier than I've ever been today present day 2016 March I'm healthier than I've ever been in my entire life and I'm very 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 grateful 
So turmeric is the next the next thing. Whoops, the next thing on my list that I'm going to share with you guys. Everything's crashing crashing down. Um, can you still hear me? Okay, Bobby. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is the the brand of turmeric. Again, I get this at Costco. You can find this on Amazon. You can find that B12 that I showed you on Amazon as well. If you're more of an Amazon person than a Costco person, maybe you don't have Costco in your town. Amazon and it is pretty affordable. It's not as affordable as Costco, but very very affordable This is the most affordable B12 that that doesn't give me weird stomach ache jitters and most affordable turmeric And so this is the brand um, it is called youth theory like youth theory and um, I take three of these a day You can take them one one and one or you can take them all three at once. I take them all three at once because I just want, bam, I want that inflammation gone and I want it to last as long as possible. I work with my hands all day, every day. I'm on apps messaging people. I'm typing. I'm messaging people. I'm on YouTube. I'm, I'm, I'm doing edits. I'm doing graphic design. I'm working on our website. I'm typing up something. I'm working with my hands every single day of my life, seven days a week for several hours a day, sometimes 8 to 10 to 12 hours a day. And this is a lifesaver right here. This is this makes it possible for me to do all the work that I do with you guys because otherwise my hands just cramp up and they hurt so bad. Turmeric. Um, the next thing, let's move this over here. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to share with you guys is flaxseed oil. Okay, I take one of these a day. It's organic flaxseed oil and I got this at Costco and it's Nature made you can also find this on Amazon. This is the most affordable that I found um, For the for the volume so that I get the big one because it's it's less expensive over time And it's a good investment in my overall health now this helps with omega-3s and then it's there's this omega-369 is what they're recommending for brain health and for the health of your joints and um this is just what I do. Again, please check with your doctors before you do anything that I, Athena Moberg, tell you to do or anything that Bobby is, is recommending as well. And um, and the last thing I'm going to share with you guys, this is on the topic of um, trouble sleeping. When I first met Bobby a couple years ago, like two, like over two years ago, I was having trouble sleeping. I was having, um, that was when I had a mental breakdown and I was having hallucinations, audible hallucinations. I even had a couple of visual hallucinations and I was taking Advil PM to help me sleep. It wasn't working. And if you take Advil, which is ibuprofen over a prolonged period of time, or even Aleve PM over a long period of time, it can make your stomach bleed. It says right there on the bottle, this can make your stomach bleed. So just only take so many, only, and not for a long period of time. So I'm not telling you to do that. It worked for a little while for me, you guys, but it didn't work. Um, it, it, it just stopped working, and I didn't, I couldn't count the cost. I was doing all this anti-inflammatory, like, nutrition work, and then I was sort of like, oh, but I'll just OD on some Advil and just take 12 Advil a day because I need it. It's like, it just, it didn't make sense to me, so I stopped. I stopped the Advil. What I do instead is now some of you mentioned Benadryl. Benadryl, for some reason, the antihistamine that is in Benadryl, um, it wires me out. It, it causes my brain to race, and I don't know why that is. It's just a personal preference. This active ingredient in this Kirkland brand that I get at Costco, this sleep aid, this over-the-counter, it is called Dox, Doxlamine succinate. 25 milligrams, nighttime sleep aid, helps reduce difficulty in falling asleep. Now, you guys, this doesn't help me stay asleep. This helps me fall asleep. I have more trouble falling asleep than I do staying asleep sometimes. When my PTSD is pretty bad and I'm having emotional flashbacks and nightmares, like I had a new memory the other night of just some horrific abuse that I had incurred vaginally. I was having horrible, horrible nightmares about it. And I couldn't fall back asleep. So I, it was, it was three in the morning and I had taken this at nine o'clock the previous night and I took another one. Like it's only 25 milligrams and, and that might not be the smartest thing to do, but um, take one tablet 30 minutes before going to bed. Take once daily or as directed by your doctor, don't give to children under 12 years old. So I did. I took one at three, at three in the morning and I was able to fall back asleep by like four something and then I was super groggy obviously because I had that period of time I wasn't sleeping. But this is over the counter and it works really well and it's very, very, very affordable. 
you can get a two pack of these for like five dollars and each one has 96 tablets in it that's over three months in one bottle so I have a six month supply for like five or six dollars so um, that's that's what I use that's my personal that's my personal uh, Plus, I have a whole other thing full of vitamins. I take hair, skin, and nail vitamins. I take calcium because I'm pre-osteo. Um, I also take uh, resveratrol, which is the ingredient found in red wine. That it's it is for um, it promotes immune immune health and kills free radicals. Um, how they say like um, when you drink a glass of red wine, like it helps kill free radicals or whatever, and it's really great for your skin. Um, I have some skin issues and so I take resveratrol if you guys want information on this I'll just post it in the comments below the video Just let me know ahead of time and I will and then the other vitamin I take as well is called hyaluronic acid Hyaluronic acid is for your it's for your skin and it can work for your joints as well So you can put it on as a topical or you can take vitamins of hyaluronic acid I take hyaluronic acid orally and it helps my joints it helps um, with flexibility and uh, just all over my body, and I'm sure it helps my skin from the inside out as well. So that's what works for me, and if you wanted to see those, I could show them to you a whole other time. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go over this food pyramid with you that I keep on my refrigerator and what helps me and what I've been doing for three years, and I've, I'm the healthiest I've ever been in my entire life, even when I only weighed like 130-something pounds when I was anorexic. Now, I felt better when I was 130 something pounds instead of what I weigh right now, which I'm not going to tell you. Please don't ask, it is very impolite. <laughs> um, but, but when I was anorexic, I was anorexic. So I looked fabulous in my own mind. I looked super fabulous, but I was never skinny enough because anorexia is in the mind, it's not the body. Um, but I wasn't healthy, I wasn't healthy in the mind, and my body was really, really, really damaged because I was withholding I was withholding anything with fat in it, anything with calories. I was limiting myself to like 600 to 700 calories a day. Super not healthy. So I'm going to do a screen share right now with you guys, like Bobby said. And um, I hope I can do the Yay! Is, is it there? Oops, oops. It's there. It's there. Okay, but hit the present to all. Okay. Um, I'm going to find – is it still there? Let me find uh -huh. present, present. Oh, present to everyone. Okay. Got it. Okay. So you guys – here is my anti-inflammatory food pyramid that, that I have just loved um, uh, sharing with you guys. Is it still there, Bobby? It, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so I'm just going to – I'm going to start at the bottom, actually, because here on the bottom we have raw and cooked vegetables, all parts of the color spectrum. So everything I'm talking about on this food pyramid, you guys, the reason that – if I say choose organic if possible – I do realize that us being adult survivors of childhood abuse, organic foods were maybe not something that we were that we were deemed worthy of. In fact, we might have been fed foods that were very unhealthy, fast food, canned food, stuff that's very high in sodium. The reason that I'm going to say organic, even though it's a little bit more expensive and you guys may not be able to afford it, it's just something that I have chosen to do without a lot of other things so that I can get organic versions is because when here in Hawaii where I live if it's not organic there's chemicals on it chemicals caught your body doesn't understand what that chemical is when there are chemicals used on vegetables and in foods and when your body doesn't understand a chemical it will get inflamed it will it will freak out it, it's stressed out your body gets stressed out when it comes across a chemical and it's trying to process it it gets confused and it stresses it out and it causes inflammation, period. So I, I don't want to be redundant and say over and over and over again organic. I'm just going to tell you right now, anything I'm talking about, organic is the best version if you can find it for affordable. And sometimes you can even get frozen versions of vegetables and fruits that are organic. I buy, moving over to the right on the bottom, fruits. I buy organic fruits to put in smoothies and I do kale in our smoothies now organic kale organic spinach organic ginger um, I do that like in a smoothie with some organic frozen fruits and um, whenever whatever fruits are in season are the ones that they're saying that you that you should that you should eat I think I'm assuming that's because they want them to be fresh but I do frozen and I think it's just as good so moving up here now to um, the whole and cracked grains three to five times a day 
um, which by the way, it says four to five day serving, four to five servings a day of vegetables and three to four a day of the fruits. And this is three to five a day of the whole, of the whole cracked grains. I do coaches oats. It's, um, they're steel cut oats. You guys, I should have brought the bag in here, but, um, it, it's, or it's organic and all it is, all the ingredients in the whole bag, it just says steel, organic steel cut oats. And they're not instant oats. There's no sodium. There's no chemicals on them to make them cook fast or anything. It takes it takes a while for them to cook, but but it's worth it. And my I feel the difference in my body when I don't eat the steel cut oats. I eat them every single day. I have a bowl of steel cut oats. And what I do is I take these steel cut oats and then I go down here to these fruits, and I put the frozen blueberries in with the steel cut oats and like a little bit of cinnamon, which we're going to get to up here. Cinnamon is anti-inflammatory. So over here, pasta, uh, two to three servings of pasta per week. Um, you don't have to eat two to three servings, but like I think they're saying like as a maximum. It says here al dente. I didn't know what that was when I was younger. I never heard of that before. But al dente means when you cook the pasta, um, not all the way through to where it's a little bit mushy. You leave it a little bit hard. Not to where you can bite into it and it's chewy and it's like annoying and you can tell it needs to cook longer, but it's just not mushy yet. And for some reason, when you when you eat pasta and it's al dente, it it is your body processes it differently and you get more fiber. For some reason, if you cook it too long, the fiber gets like boiled out of it or something, and it's just a starch. There's no vitamin or nutrients that are that are in it. Right. If you overcook it. Um, yeah, it depletes it. Yeah, and then beans. Um, Jack has a really great link. I think that he was going to share with everyone regarding some beans that he found at Whole Foods. There are so many different types of beans on page two and page three over here, you guys. If you like, when you go to the go over to nomoreshameproject.com or traumarecoveryuniversity.com and click on downloadables, and you'll have a link on tonight's um, on tonight's one page. There's a link to this three-page document where you can print it out yourself and you can like learn about all the different types of fruits and vegetables and whole grains and, and everything. So just so you guys can like have it to keep and you can hang it up on your fridge or something for it to help you or just as a reminder. So beans, um, I've been eating a lot more beans lately. My favorite beans, for just for me personally, I love to eat pinto beans. Pinto beans are healthy. Um, I don't cook them in oil or anything weird or like salt, like how like our families, like I come from that generation where my aunts and and like my grandmother, they used to soak beans overnight in water with a whole bunch of salt. I definitely don't do that. I soak them in water, but I don't do salt. I just don't. I, I use salt very, very, very sparingly because salt has a high sodium content, you guys. And it contributes to high blood pressure. And it's just not, it's not really good for you. A little bit of salt is okay, but it's not something that I, that I recommend. It is the opposite of anti-inflammatory. It will puff you up. You'll retain extra water. And I mean, sparingly it's okay, but salt just isn't something that I would use in excess at all. And I was never taught that as a kid. I was just told that I could do whatever, like, oh, sure, pour it on. I mean, I poured on the salt, you guys. But, but now that I know better, I do better. So here on healthy fats, Bobby explained above on the one page really, really clearly about which healthy fats and like where to get them. I love extra virgin olive oil. I don't do this whole expeller pressed canola oil. Like I don't do that. I don't know what that is. And I'm just, I'm okay with just doing extra virgin or coconut. Um, three years ago, coconut oil was not like the thing. It wasn't like the, the buzz, but now lately it's like kind of the buzzword. So I think that's why it's not on here. But walnuts, I learned something about walnuts yesterday, you guys. I want to share this with you. Um, we were learning about nuts um, in general and their properties and how they, and what they, what parts of your body they help with. Walnuts are the best nuts for your brain. And I didn't know that. Um, I can try to find the article and link it up somewhere, but walnuts are supposedly really, really, really good for your brain. Not only do they have healthy fats and they're anti-inflammatory, but they're they have some sort of nutrient in them that promotes 
um, like the regeneration of neurotransmitters or neural pathways or something. It's really good for your brain. So I don't know why or or what the purpose is behind it. I just remember reading it. So um, like Bobby mentioned, avocados, seeds. I know Joe was mentioning she loves sunflower seeds. I like sunflower seeds. I love pumpkin seeds. It's hard to find them without salt on them, though. I love salt. It's delicious. But I can overdo. I can overdo the salt real easy because salty snacks are kind of my kryptonite. So, um, And it says freshly ground flax seeds. I put these freshly ground flax seeds when I can find them in the smoothie because they're not delicious, you guys. They're just not. They're not delicious. They're not like, mmm, yummy, some flax seeds, delish. They're just not good. So, but, um, but you could put them in your fruit. And then up here at the very, very top when it talks about plain dark chocolate, they have these things called cocoa nibs. If you like a chocolate, like a little bit of chocolate flavor in your smoothie, you can actually leave the berries out and do a little these cocoa nibs. They come from the cacao. And they're actually really, really, really good for you. And they're high in antioxidants, like even higher in antioxidants than organic blueberries. So a little fun fun fact for you there. Um, fish and seafood, like Bobby already talked about, Alaskan salmon is my favorite because it's the least fishy of all of these other choices. And you can get it for really, really, really affordable at Costco. Alaskan, uh, Alaskan salmon, wild Alaskan sockeye salmon. Um, you can get it at Costco, and it's really affordable. Um, whole soy foods. I want to say something really quick to the women out there. If you are struggling with some sort of um, pre-menopause, your, your perimenopausal, consuming too much tofu or too much soy, it will throw your hormones out of whack, and it will actually cause you to get more hot flashes and gain more weight for some reason. So just read carefully before you do any of this, if you're perimenopausal, ladies, um, too much soy is not good for women if they are perimenopausal. So I found that out kind of the hard way. Um, cooked Asian mushrooms, you all know if you've been listening or watching our channel for any time, I'm not a fan of mushrooms. I was tricked into eating mushrooms from one of my abusers when I was little and it was pretty traumatizing. Like. It was a huge bully situation. There was a lot of abuse involved and just the trickery and the, the, just the betrayal. It's just, it's one of my most vivid memories from my childhood. So um, button mushrooms, just remember that button mushrooms and canned mushrooms and those white mushrooms that you get at the grocery store that people put in salads, those are inflammatory. Those are not anti-inflammatory, part of the anti-inflammatory diet. Cooked Asian mushrooms, the type of, Mushrooms that you want to look for that are anti-inflammatory are shiitake, enokadake, maitake, and oyster. These mushrooms contain compounds that enhance immune function. Never eat these mushrooms raw and minimize the consumption of common commercial button mushrooms, including cremini and portobello, because those are the ones that are um, inflammatory. Not so good for you. So other sources of protein here, one to two servings a week, these, um, these high omega-3 eggs, they're usually the ones that are brown. You can find the white ones that are, that are higher in omega-3s as well, but the ones I find at Costco for very, very, very affordable are organic omega-3 enriched eggs. And um, I usually will just make like maybe like one a week. Like on a Saturday, I'll make myself an egg with a piece of toast or something, but um, it says high quality natural cheeses and yogurt and skinless poultry and lean meats. Um, I know that Jack was wondering what are, what are other lean meats besides skinless poultry? Um, I do, I do skinless boneless chicken breasts and we put them on the barbecue and we do like some like seasoning on the outside with extra virgin olive oil and like just some like, you know, organic, like oregano, paprika, garlic, whatever, like pepper. And then we put them in little Ziploc containers and have them throughout the week in salads and stuff. And then we do the, um, the yogurt that has the omega threes in it. And we get that at, um, they actually have that at Costco as well. But I'm not, I don't eat a lot of cheese. I love cheese. I think the reason I avoid cheese is because I'll overdo it. The same reason I avoid the salty snacks. So, uh, and I don't really know, you guys. I do not know what a high quality natural cheese looks like. I don't even know what that is. I mean, 
cheese is delicious. Give me more cheese. I don't even care what kind it is. Just give me some cheese. Like, so as far as like knowing what high quality cheese is, no clue, no clue at all. Um, this is, this is the part that I love healthy herbs and spices, such as garlic, ginger, turmeric, cinnamon, and it says unlimited amounts. Anytime I get to do an unlimited amount of something, I love it. I buy the big, huge thing of turmeric, and I love to make like homemade curry. Um, I use um, these chili peppers here. I get them dried at the Mexican food store. Um, and I've just been testing out whatever different um, spices that I like. Like I know paprika and oregano and garlic and turmeric are they are used a lot in ethnic dishes specifically Mexican foods and some Mediterranean foods as well and I love them oregano isn't listed right here but it is so 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 good for you you guys oregano is very anti-inflammatory and it also kills bad cholesterol so oregano is is good all around like it's good for your brain it's good it's good for everything tea Sarah is pouring me a cup of tea right now and the type of tea that is best for us if we're looking for anti-inflammatory properties is white tea, green tea, and oolong tea. My grandmother's favorite tea in the world was oolong. I'd never even heard it before, but I remember that that, that was her favorite. Um, some examples of white tea are like, um, I think they have like, like, I think jasmine tea might be a what You can get white jasmine tea. I think I saw that on Amazon. And then green tea, you guys, there's all kinds of different types of green tea, but those are the ones that are anti-inflammatory, and then the teas that um, are not anti-inflammatory, that don't include anti-inflammatory properties, you guys, are just your average like Lipton tea, which is usually a black tea. Black tea is the least anti-inflammatory. And supplements, we covered that uh, prior to the screen share. Red wine, here it says optional, and I, I enjoy this option. I typically will have one glass of red wine with my husband every single night with a tiny little piece of dark chocolate here sometimes, but usually only about once a week on the chocolate. I'm not, I don't, I try to stay away because um, for those of you who don't know this, I did not know this and it was a huge eye opener for me. Chocolate has a lot of caffeine in it. Caffeine, naturally, it's just naturally caffeinated. If you love to have a piece of dark chocolate, at nighttime and you can't sleep, cut out that dark chocolate and it might do something really amazing for you. Now these other two pages, link those up over on the downloadables page, go to traumarecoveryuniversity.com or nomoreshameproject.com, click on the tab that says downloadables, look for tonight's one page which is um, nutrition to support your recovery and then just you'll get access to, to this and again this is not my uh, copyrighted material I got it from this guy dr. dr. wheel dr. Weil and I love it so um, that kind of uh, concludes stop presenting stop screen sharing oh there we go hi hey everybody um, so that concludes my portion of tonight's um, broadcast it is so exciting to share with you what actually works for me you guys this is something that I'm it's not a theory it isn't like pie in the sky theory this this stuff has changed my life like I feel different if I eat different foods other than these foods I love me some Oreos ask Bobby when I go to Texas like I'm like take me to the market I want to get me some Oreo cookies you know I mean I love to have some chips some pretzels I know Melissa said her kryptonite is pretzels I love Oreo cookies and some pretzels like I love that but when I eat those foods and I don't eat these anti-inflammatory foods I can feel the difference my body feels different I think differently I get more irritable I get more groggy and tired and sort of sluggish and I don't sleep as well and I have like um, digestive issues when I eat foods that are different than these foods so anyway I'm glad that I got an opportunity to share. I know that we are um, running just a little bit over on time right now, but we did get started a little bit late because um, we were having some major tech issues with the Google software. So, um, hey, Bobby, are there any questions I can answer? Or is everybody doing great? Um, just some questions like uh, people wanted to know, can I put lemon in green tea? And Yes. Sure. Citrus, 
citrus is something that is really that is good for you and it does have anti-inflammatory properties I didn't it's not even on this particular pyramid but pink grapefruit is the most anti-inflammatory citrus for some reason and it's the best for you it's the best for your skin it's the best for your brain it's the best for your uh, like diet like dietary wise like um, as a like a, I don't know if it's a diuretic or what it does but yes definitely do some lemon um, sometimes I do a little lime like if I have um, sometimes people will just bring us like fresh limes from their tree or whatever but yeah citrus is really really good for you and it's high in vitamin C and it helps build your immune system as well so um, yeah but very important about the grapefruit is there for some reason it interacts with a lot of different medications so be careful with grapefruit it is incredibly healthy um, but for some reason, there is something about it, and I don't know my chemistry well enough to know what it is. Um, and you'll often see it if it's, you know, when you get your medication bottles, has that little sideways sticker that you have to tilt your head to read and says, you know, do not consume grapefruit while taking this medication. Uh, so be careful with that one. Um, but other than that, some of us are lamenting the fact that mozzarella cheese sticks are you know, fried mozzarella sticks are, are not on the anti-inflammatory diet, but, um, damn it. <laughs> I, I want some Oreo cookies on that diet is what I want. I mean, where's the anti-inflammatory version of those? And I'll take a side of mozzarella cheese sticks, please, with those as well. Because, yeah. man. And you guys, like Bobby and I, we're just, we're just two real girls that are living real lives trying to recover for, from some real difficult shit. And, we're not saying that, that this is how we eat every single day 24-7. This is a goal, and this is, this is what works for me when I'm in my best place and I'm making the best choices. I got a treadmill for my birthday in the other room, and when I'm rehabbing my hip from when I did a marathon and it's still injured, so and I'm going to the doctor and I'm doing all these healthy things. It's just one little step at a time, you guys. Please don't feel like we ever show up here thinking like we got it all figured out and you guys are the ones that are screwed up. Like, no, we are here with you. We say this all the time and I'm going to just continue to say it. I am, I struggle. I get triggered. I have flashbacks. I have nightmares. I have emotional flashbacks. I have PTSD. I struggle. My executive functioning just, I, I struggle. I struggle, you guys. Um, but when I do these things and like make little healthy steps in the right direction it encourages me and it empowers me like I didn't have a choice when I was younger and I have a choice now and I know that that I mean Bobby and I will never ever tell you that we're perfect and that we make perfect food choices I love me some frozen pizza give me like a it's a DiGiorno it's DiGiorno that's what I want right now some pepperoni you know um but, but I can't do it all the time. I got to try to make healthier choices because I feel better. Bobby, what about you? What's your favorite, like, cheat food? <laughs> uh, I, I must admit I have a weakness for cookies. So um, that's my go-to food when I'm overstressed and struggling. So um, obviously that's not a good choice, but that is – that's my weakness. So. I love I love chips if I'm stressed out like I'll love to have some chips I'll like go down to the market and buy a little bag of chips I'll never buy a big bag though because I know I'll finish it and I, so I can't but so yeah salty is my go-to if I'm struggling with something but um, but yeah I love thin mints thin mints are my favorite cookie in the whole wide world thin mint Girl Scout cookies those are good why in the world are they thin mints yeah, they need to be thick mints. I mean, come on, let's just get real. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. um, so, you guys, I mean, we could sit here and hang out with you and um, and spend time with you for uh, for a lot more hours. But we want to honor you and honor your time and thank you for spending time with us. So, unless you are brand new and not plugged into Safe Community. 
um, then we're going to um, end tonight's broadcast and transition into the period of time when we do screen shares with how you can join Safe Community. Again, it's free. There's no catch. It's not like we're going to reel you in so we can sell you some like bill of goods and like, you know, tell you it's going to be, you know, $150 or whatever. There's nothing for sale on these webinars. We're just here to provide value for you. And we want to keep it that way for as long as possible, which is why we do so many other things on the side with our time. So if you are new here and you want to get plugged into safe community, we're going to do some screen shares. Bobby has a screen share on how to get plugged into safe community and how you can contact us personally, we have our contact information. And then like I mentioned at the beginning of, of tonight's broadcast, we have an easy four-step process on how you can um, come and heal with other survivors that have survived similar um, situations that you've survived. Like okay. something, mag something magical um, happens when you like get plugged into a group and then you see somebody post something and you're like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe they just posted that. That that's me. That's my life. They're type they're they must have they have like a a a hole and they could just see into my house. Like how did they know so much about me? All of our stories are so similar sometimes, you guys. So um if you need to feel like you're not alone and that you're surrounded by people that really get it, then stick around for the next 15 minutes. Otherwise, aloha. We love you. We honor you and appreciate your time. So um, take it away, Bobby. <laughs> okay. Let us look at ways to join in safe community with us. And I need to press the right button here. Yay, there we go. Okay. It looks beautiful. All right. So ways to join our safe community. We have three tw Twitter chats a week. These are free. Anybody can join in at any time. Um, you know, we'd love it if you come on time, but you can come late. You can show up for the last 10 minutes if you like. You can follow along and not participate at all. Um, whatever it is that you feel comfortable doing. Uh, the first Twitter chat is on Monday. And it is um, in the morning here in the United States. And that is to accommodate our UK community. We have a large community of survivors in the UK. And so we started this chat, I think just about 14 months ago now, um, so that they would have a chat that is at a regular normal people time for them, and not one that was at two o'clock in the morning. So that chat uses the hashtag CSAQT, Child Sexual Abuse Question Time. It is on Mondays at 10 o'clock in the morning Pacific and 6 p.m. Um, in the UK. Then this that you're participating in or watching right now is our second um, Twitter chat during the week is a combination Twitter chat and video broadcast. The hashtag is no more shame and we are on the air um, at 6 p.m. Pacific time or that is 2 o'clock in the morning if you're in the UK on Tuesday. Then our final Twitter chat of the week uses the hashtag sex abuse chat and that is at 6 p.m. Um, Pacific time or 9 Eastern on Tuesday evening or it's 2 o'clock in the morning if you are in the UK. And if you want to ever watch and join in on the Q&A with our broadcasts, you always just have to go to bit.ly forward slash trauma recovery you and the T, the R and the U do need to be capitalized. That's important. If you would like to join one of our support groups on Facebook, they're secret and private. No one will know that you belong. And they're free as well. Um, follow this four-step process. And we would really appreciate if you would do it this way rather than email us or um, send us um, a direct message on Twitter or um, send us a message on our professional business pages on Facebook because this is where we will get notifications and we'll know um, that you're there waiting and needing for us to get you hooked up with a support group. So 
I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so y'all can see it better. There we go. So down there on the bottom of the page. In order to get admitted to one of our Facebook groups, please like the Trauma Recovery University page and then send us, then friend us, send us a friend request. Um, and please do that for both of us because one of us might be able to get back to you sooner than the other. Oh, yeah. We're on different time zones, you guys. I forgot to mention that. I'm located in Hawaii, which is three hours earlier than West Coast. And Bobby is in the central time zone, which is one hour earlier than the East Coast. Yep. So that's why we ask that you friend us both, because truly it depends on, um, you know, who's awake <laughs> and who's on social media. After we have accepted your friend request, please send us a message that says something like, I'd like to heal and safe community. I'd like to join one of your support groups. If we do not already know you from our Twitter chats or having connected with you personally at a conference um, or knowing you from interactions on Facebook, we will ask you some questions. Um, and that is because we want to make sure that the people that we let into our Facebook groups are safe and are not predators in disguise. The safety of our support groups is a huge priority for us. So we ask that you please be patient with us if we ask you some questions. And then after we've had a chance to vet you, we will um, put you in one of the support groups and we will post an introduction so that people can welcome you. Okay. Now let's, whoops, wrong button. Um, let's put up our contact information. Oh, looks like I can't do that quite yet. Hang on. <laughs> you guys, Make thank that. you so much for, uh, for hanging out and for supporting one another on the Twitter stream tonight. We always appreciate the support you offer one another and um, just want to encourage you uh, to just, Say hi, even if um, you can't stay for the whole chat. Like Bobby was saying, you can just come for a few minutes and, and just say hi. Or you can even use the hashtag no more shame to ask a question throughout the week. We try to monitor the hashtag, or at least I do. Okay. Let's take a look at ways to connect with us. Um, you can email us. <clears throat> this big ah. Yeah. Um, at Bobby L. Parrish at gmail.com, Athena Moberg speaking at gmail.com, and our joint email address is no more shame project at gmail.com. We ask for your patience, please, because we are, um, we do now have some volunteers that we're getting geared up to um, help us with the backlog of emails that we have, but please be patient with us if it takes us a little bit of time to get back to you. Um, on Twitter, you can reach out to us. I am Bobby L. Parrish. Athena is Athena Moberg. And then Trauma Recovery University is Trauma Recovery U. On Facebook, we have the Trauma Recovery University webpage. Uh, Facebook account, sorry about that. My professional page, which is Bobby Parrish Coaching and Consulting. My personal page, which is Bobby Parrish. Athena's professional page is Athena Moberg Speaking. And her personal page is Dawn Athena Moberg. You can find all of our videos on YouTube, Roku TV, or Google Plus. Just do a search for Trauma Recovery University. And there's the shortened bit.ly link, and that's where you can go every week to uh, watch us do our live broadcasts and to interact on the Twitter stream. And that is it. Wonderful. So next week, we are going to be tackling three topics that affect every survivor in their recovery journey. And Bobby, do you want to let them know what the three topics are, the triad that we're, that we're yes, going to discuss? Yes, the trifecta of stumbling blocks um, <laughs> in the recovery process of avoidance, denial, and minimizing. 
So we're going to tackle those three next week because they are, um, in my experience, three of the most frequent stumbling blocks that trip survivors up um, on their recovery journey. So yeah. join us then. And just, just to clarify, Bobby, like we've all experienced minimization from other people minimizing our abuse and avoiding and all of that. But are we talking about us as the survivor avoiding yes. and minimizing our own yes. um, trauma? And okay. I just wanted, yes. I just wanted to clarify. So um, you guys were really grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting one another for showing up early and, and uh, being a part of our, of our weekly live Q&A, our second Twitter chat of the week. We have three Twitter chats a week like Bobby just showed on the screen share. You can rewind about five minutes if you have any questions about that or go down into the description of this video and you can see everything that we talked about. And if you go to the about section of our YouTube channel, you can find out how to get plugged into Safe Community in case somehow you missed it. So we appreciate you. I'm Athena Moberg, and this is Bobby Parrish, and we love bringing you everything you need for healthy, informed trauma recovery. Bye, everybody. Bye.